Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sunday service. Uh, I have the pleasure of giving the word for today. Before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we just thank you for this word today. We pray that you um, just anoint me with the words you want me to speak. We know this is truly a word from you. So just guide me and just help me and just get me to speak all the words you want. Anoint me with your spirit right now and bless this word for everyone to hear. Open our hearts and minds and spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, today's word. Let's start in Psalms 118, verse 1. And it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's message is called Being Thankful. You know, this has been a week of Thanksgiving, and it's all about giving thanks. Amen. So, there's more fitting that this message be about being thankful. Amen. God knew exactly what he was doing. So let's look at being thankful. Let's start with David's song of thanksgiving. We know David was always giving thanks to the Lord. He wrote a whole bunch of songs about all the things he was going through and how he was always giving thanks to God. But this is the song that he gave to him, and not only him, but to the children of Israel as well. So in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 7 to 36, it says, On that day David first delivered this song into the hands of Asaph and his brethren to thank the Lord. Amen. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing songs to him. Talk of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, giving thanks is, I realize, it's just not so much as just giving thanks and praise to God, but it's also praising the Lord as well. Amen. In this psalm, David's talking about it's a lot of praising God and thanking God. It's a lot of him seeking the Lord and rejoicing in the Lord because David knew that the Lord was the reason for everything that he was blessed with. Amen. Amen. And I think we know as well that God is the reason that we're blessed with everything that we are blessed with. Amen. And we are truly to be thankful for those things. In verse 11, it says, Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servants, you, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. Praise the Lord. Not only is he talking about himself, but he's also talking about the Israelites. The chosen one of Israel, the ones that we all should be thankful for everything. It says, he is Lord, our God. His judgments are in all, all the earth. Remember his covenant forever. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. Amen. Not only is his covenant true today, but today, and tomorrow, and forever for a thousand generations. David continues to just go on talking about all the things that God has done. And he's showing how thankful he truly is. The covenant which made him, the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath with Isaac and confirmed it to Jacob for a statue, 
to Israel for an everlasting covenant. David's got a lot to be thankful for, amen? Mm -hmm. But not only is he thanking God for himself, but he's thanking God for the people. Jacob is going way back to when the Israelites were in bondage. He's going way back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, giving thanks for them as well. Remembering the covenant that God has for us and thanking God for that as well. It continues to go on. He says, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as an allotment for your inheritance. When you were few in numbers, indeed very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, and from one kingdom to another people. You know, David is truly reflecting and giving thanks for all the things that God did for him. When all the people were against him, when Saul tried to kill him, when Absalom tried to take his kingdom, he was still giving thanks. Amen? He was. He knew that everything was in God's hand. And he was thankful for God for rescuing him and helping him. He permitted no man to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake. The children of Israel were blessed. And they gave thanks. He's giving thanks for them blessing them. He did not allow them to do anything to happen to them. And he rebukes the kings for their sake, saying, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim good news of his salvation from day to day. Amen. <laughs> Sing. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. Amen. <laughs> there is no other God like our God. Amen. And we thank God for Jesus Christ. For all other gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord, O families of people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Praise the Lord. David really knew how to thank the Lord, amen? He knew, he knew truly how to thank the Lord. Tremble, tremble before him all the earth. The earth also is firmly established. It shall not be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Amen. Amen. The Lord reigns. Let the seas roar in all its fullness. Let the fields rejoice and all that is in it. Then the trees of the woods shall rejoice before the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endures forever. Amen. Oh, give thanks. Praise the Lord. And say, save us, O oh Lord, our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord of Israel from, from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Amen.
This is going way beyond being thankful. Amen. David is truly laying down everything. We have this kind of thankfulness for each and every one of us. God is truly calling us all to be thankful. We, we got thankful for God bringing us all here today and we can all come before his. But we can thank God for the things that we've gone through in our life, just like David is talking about. He's praising God and thanking him for, for all the things he went to that brought him to this place of being king. To this place of him being a man after God's own heart. And we all want to try and be a man after God's own heart. But that's what God has to do. And we have to pray about it and give it to him. We are truly blessed because we have our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's to be thankful enough just for that. Amen. So therefore, we are bound to give thanks. Just like David, just like the Israelites, just like the prophets, we are all bound to give thanks to the Lord because his mercies do endure forever. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord. Because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Amen. You know, we, we did not choose God. Amen. None of us. None of us. It says right here, from the beginning, God chose you for salvation. From the very beginning, he's chose you. We should be thankful for that, just for that reason alone. But through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, God chose us all to serve him and honor him and give him thanks. Amen. God chose us all to do the work that he wants us to do. And we don't have to do this work alone because he will put it in our spirit exactly what he wants. It's up to us to just follow him, believe in him, and trust in him, and have faith in him, and he will do the rest. But I like this verse because it says from the beginning he chose you for salvation. We didn't see none of this coming. Amen? No, I didn't. I don't know if you did, but I didn't see it coming. But this company didn't know that I was chosen very from the beginning. It's comforting to know that I had to go through a bunch of stuff so that I could stand here today and give thanks for going through a bunch of stuff. You know? Amen. We do. Good, bad, ugly, whatever it was. God let us go through this stuff because we were chosen. And now as the chosen vessels of the Lord, we continue to go through the sanctification by the spirit and the belief in the truth because now our eyes are open to the ways of the world. Our eyes are open to the things that God wants us to see. Our eyes are just being opened more and more. We don't look at life the same way. We don't. I know I don't. I don't know about anybody else. But I, I don't see things the way I used to see things. And I thank God for that. Because I could have kept going down the same road of, of being in darkness and not understanding and leaning on my own and not knowing what the truth is. As we all could. But praise the Lord that he chose us from the beginning. Amen to that. From the very beginning, before we even knew him. So we are always to give thanks. Amen. We are. No matter what. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 to 6, it says, we give thanks to God always for you all. And this is Paul talking. 
Paul is always praying and, and giving thanks for all of us, for all the people during that time. He says, making mention of you in our prayers. He was always praying for the people. It says, remembering without ceasing your works of faith, your labor of love, and patience and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. Amen. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. Knowing your election by God. Chosen from the beginning, amen. Your election amen. by God. Chosen. For our gospel did not come to you only in words only. For our gospel did not come to you in words only but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear the word and we see the word and we understand the word, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit is what God puts the word. Amen. It's in all our hearts. The gospel did not come by just mere word. We, I stand here today and just preach and talk and all this thing, share the word of God. But it's the power of the Holy Spirit that puts it in here. Amen. It truly is. We have to have an open heart for that power of the Spirit to enter our hearts. Praise the Lord. And in as much assurance as you know what kind of man we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and the land and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Amen. A lot of thanking the Lord, a lot of giving, praying. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints because of the hope which is laid upon you in heaven of which you heard before the word of the, of the truth of the gospel which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing for fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. Amen. Amen. You know, the truth sparked us all. It was the truth that drove us to Christ. Amen. Or it's the truth that we heard that wasn't of God that sparked us to God because we can hear things that just don't sound quite right. And it causes us to want to find out what the truth really is. And we still do. There are many, many people there today out preaching truth that they call truth. But we know that those things can be the commandments of man and the truth for man and not the truth of God. So therefore, we have to learn how to discern because that's what the world does. But God is truly with uh, his chosen ones. Amen. He's with his chosen one. And knew the grace of God in truth. God continues to do this wonderful work in us. And we ought to continue to be thankful for the work that God does in us. The things that we do have to go through sometimes. We are bound to give thanks for all the things. We are to praise the Lord every day and surrender it all to him. So being thankful to the Lord for his grace, we always have to be thankful for his grace because it's his mercy and his grace that saves us it's his mercy and his grace that keeps us going. 
It's the mercy and grace of God that rem reminds us every day that we don't fight our battles alone, that God is truly with us, that he never leaves us or forsake us. The promises that we thank him for are the promises he has and the grace that he has for each and every one of us. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 17, it says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. This is Paul talking about himself, the things that he did. He didn't know what he was doing. He thought he was doing the work of God. He thought God was dead, actually, you know, and he was just following all the rules. But then God opened his eyes and God gave him mercy. Out of all the things he did, he still obtained mercy because God know he did it out of ignorance and unbelief. Praise the Lord. I think we all have done things that we did out of ignorance because we didn't know. God had not called us yet. Amen. Mm -hmm. We did these things because we weren't, we weren't ready. He hadn't called us. And just like Paul, just like Paul, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Then he saw the light and he saw the Lord. And the Lord told him what he wanted him to do. And he felt the grace of the Lord upon him. And he was thankful ever since. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Amen. Paul called himself the chief of all sinners. Amen. And he did. He was. We read about all the things that Paul did. They were not good in the eyes of God. But, in, but God saved him anyway. All the people we see that do wrong, God will save them anyway. Amen. He wants the world to be saved, for sure. He wants them all to follow him. And we give thanks for every person that God brings to him. Amen. We are truly thankful for that. It says, however, for this reason, I obtained mercy. Only by the grace of God, he realized that he obtained mercy. That in, that in me, first, Jesus Christ might show long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe in him for everlasting life. We have a truly faithful, patient Lord. We praise the Lord. We don't have to get it all right now because we probably couldn't anyway. This long suffering is patience in the pattern that it takes a while for God to get us exactly where he wants us to be. Look at the disciples. It took them a while to become apostles. It did. They had to go through some stuff. They had to kill their, their flesh so they could become more spirit and become more and more and more spirit. We are the same way. Before we can become apostles of God, we have to get rid of all this flesh, all of it. And let God continue to do the work. And once all of that is gone, 
we will be singing just like Paul and praising the Lord. It says, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul Amen. giving thanks to God for changing him, for opening his eyes and letting him see that he was truly alive. He was thanking God for truly forgiving him for all the things that he did that he did not know what he was doing. He was thanking God that he brought him into the kingdom. Praise the Lord for that. And he served the Lord well. Amen. Amen. Well. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17, it says, Therefore, as the elects of God, you and me, we're all the elects of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, on suffering. This is what we need to put on. It says, put these things on. Every day we have to wear these things. We have to put them on holy, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you, so you, must do also. You must also do. Can we do this without God? Absolutely not. Can we put on mercies and kindness and gentleness every day? Just go out up and start doing it. Not nah, without God, we can. Can we bear with one another and forgive one another, not argue with one another, not fight with one another? And no. Thank God that if we have Him, we can do it. Amen. Can we? It doesn't come down to can we. It comes down to will we. Will we surrender? And we will continue to be thankful when God does this work. The words are all here and they're all true. God truly teaches us the way we should go and the things that we should do. We should all be thankful while we're doing it. Amen. 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 But of all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Amen. Walking in love. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Amen. And be thankful. Why are you doing all of these things and going through all these things? God says be thankful. Praise the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deeds, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. Amen. In all you do in words and deeds. So what does it say? We have to like, watch what we say. Amen. You have to watch what we do. And we have to do it all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we definitely don't want to do nothing bad, right? If we're doing it in the name of the Lord. We don't want to do it do anything but God has to help us amen and under these things we can do on our own and without the Lord amen because we do have a battle we have a battle with the flesh and we have a battle with the spirit and a lot of times we act out of the flesh and not out of the spirit <coughs> just me 
Sometimes we taste things out of the flesh and not out of the spirit. We do things out of the flesh and not out of the spirit. But we have to think sometimes when we are doing it in the name of Jesus Christ, that's when we can pause and meditate and think. Sometimes the flesh overwhelms us and we just do stuff without even thinking about it. It just comes natural. And we are all guilty of that. But I know that God is doing a work in all of us. And we continue to give him thanks for the work he's doing in us. Amen. We do. He shows us and he leads us. He is with us and he will guide us. And we continue to give thanks for that. We all should have a thankful heart in our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so let's look at the thankful Pharisees. In Luke 18, verses 11 to 14, it says, The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself. He says, I thank uh, I, look, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. This sounds like a thankful God, a thankful prayer to you. This is the Pharisee saying, I'm glad I'm not like you. Okay, I'm not. I'm glad. You're a sinner. You do bad things. You are not one of God's chosen ones. I thank God that I'm not like you. That I don't sin and I'm holy and I'm righteous and I'm not like you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you, God. I'm not like them. That's even as this tax collector. It says, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all my possessions. I'm righteous. I'm holy. Well, you know, I'm great. And the tax collector standing in the far house would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, Lord God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Now the Pharisees was praying that I'm not like him. I didn't think that was pleasing in God's eyes, but we know the Pharisees had some issues, okay? They were worshiping the ways of man and not the ways of God. We know that the tax collector who was a humble man, who knew that he was not worthy, he knew he was a sinner. He knew that he was not right. He was thankful that he could be in the house of the Lord and pray to him. He says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other." The tax collector was more justified than the Pharisee. For everyone who insults himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. The day will come. So I know that people think about that. They think they're better than other people because they, they're CEOs, they're presidents, they're famous, they're you know, and, and poor people are beneath them. The jobs that they have, the cars that they drive, the things that they do makes them inferior to others. But that's that's not God's way. Amen. That means nothing in the eyes of the Lord. It truly doesn't. And when the time comes, they will have to account for the things that they do. We know the humble of the Lord will be exalted. 
You know, we don't need to be worried about those kind of things and covetousness and wishing we had those things or doing those things because everything's in God's hand. God will take care of it. Just like the tax collector. Who we'll give thanks always for all things. Amen. Always for all things. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 21. It's so see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the times because the days are evil. We know the days are evil. We wake up every morning and it's it's a worse a day in the eyes of evil than the next the day before. We know that evil is truly running rapid in our world and in our country, in our towns and cities. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We truly have to understand what the will of the Lord is for each and every one of us. God has a purpose and a will and a plan for every one of us. Do we know that purpose, that will, and that plan? I don't think it all has been revealed to us yet, but we can see how he's working in some areas and doing certain things in us. How we are, he's making our faith stronger. How he's helping us to believe more in him and trust in him. It says, and do not be drunk with wine. And which is the dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. I do holy at the end, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to, one another, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What God is just truly saying, we just continue to need to love him and love people. Amen. That's what it comes down to. Loving God, loving people, he takes care of the rest. He will heal our hearts. He will help us. He will bless us. He will do all the work that needs to be done in each and every one of us. We just need to love him, love people, and I'll throw in and surrender everything to him. And as we had a few weeks ago, and commit our way to him. I always have that in the back of my mind, committing my way to the Lord. And giving thanks for all things. It says, submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. Amen. If we have the fear of the Lord, we will get wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We will understand what the will of God is for us. Because we can hear his voice and he will truly tell us. God wants us to love like he loves and to walk like he wants. And can we do that without him? Absolutely not. We cannot. But the verse said, be willing to submit to the will of God. If we are willing, he is able. Amen. He truly is. That's what it comes down to. Let's come to the conclusion. You know, I was thinking about this the day I was thinking and God was just telling me about how being thankful is, is truly about giving thanks to God and just thanking him for all the things he does and praising him and honoring him. But also thanking him can come be in the reflection of 
just understanding who he is, listening to his voice and just trusting in him. It comes down to just praising him and understanding and knowing that God does have a will and a purpose. I mean, and it does come down to the things that we go to giving thanks because it talks about when things are bad, we give thanks. When things are beautiful, we give thanks. When we blesses us, we give thanks. When he answers our prayers, we give thanks. Amen. We do. It all comes down to all of those things. We do. But today, we do. We, we, we want to reflect on that. Pastor Rufus was talking about his thing was gratitude and how he was being gracious and how he was grateful for everything that God was doing. He was giving thanks to that. We do. Sometimes we have to be grateful and thankful for the things that we have. Not worrying about what other um, one person has more stuff than us or people who seem to like get ahead because I tell people all the time that's just temporary and it's not going to last, which I truly believe because the word says that. But I just thank, truly thank God for taking care of us, each and every one of us. We might be a little small church, you know, but God put this little small church together. Amen. Amen. And we thank him for that. Amen. Amen. Truly, we thank him for that. So let's finish up with Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 13 to 15. It says, Now therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? For all things come from you. And of your own, we have given you. For we are aliens and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow without a hope. We are, have no hope without our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what it comes down to. We thank him every day of our lives. And we are thankful. In Psalms 100, it says, Make a shoutful, uh, joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. 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 In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. Verse, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It says, in everything gives thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We just thank you that we just come before you with thanksgiving today. We are truly thankful for all that you do for each and every one of us. We know that we, we fall short. 
but we know that you are there to help us and guide us. And we thank you for that. You are our father and we are your children. So we pray you continue to do the work that you're doing in each and every one of us. Continue to give us your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Continue to give us a grateful and thankful heart and bless us all today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all peace today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.